Okay, welcome back. We are in chapter six, getting near. The we finished year four, where we added in realized and unrealized dream transactions, calculations for ending consolidated retained earnings, and consolidated net income with the parent section. We put the upstream with the subsection of those calculations, and we figured out how to make um, accounts are affected when you have unrealized profits. So let's go on with year five on page seven. So on year five, let me see this light on. Give me a second. Let it just get itself sorted out. Okay, so on year five, December 31st, parent reported earnings from its own operations. Um, <coughs> Um, sorry, of uh, 7572 and their dividends of 2500. They reported net income of 3294 and did not declare dividends. So well, there's no dividends to cancel or to eliminate. It's really bright, isn't it? I don't know. Well, hopefully that's clear enough for you guys. Because I think there's got too much glare. Okay. Now, let's see all the pieces. On December 34th, 31st, year 4, so that's the end of the year, subs inventory, so that's ending inventory, contained items purchased from the parent, so that's downstream, for 700 Now, that's end of year four, which means what for year five? Because we did this in year four. So it's beginning of year five. So this is beginning inventory, year five. And is it downstream? Subs inventory came from the parent, so it is downstream. And last year it was unrealized, but this year it's going to be realized. Okay, why? It's realized because it was at the end of year four it was sitting in inventory. We're assuming FIFO, so what's going to happen in year five? It's sold. So, inventory now sold. So we can realize that gross profit. So, beginning inventory in year five downstream is going to be realized. And parents' inventory contained items purchased from sub. And remember, this is December 31st, year four. Parents' inventory contained items purchased from sub, so it's upstream. And it's now beginning year, year five, so it's realized. Okay. So, just going back to our little parent, selling some inventory. The parent sells it, puts on their profit. They have to take it off because in the circle, they haven't earned it. But then the next year, the sub puts on theirs and sells it outside the circle. So we can recognize both of these. This one is all red subs books. This one was on last year's parents books. So we have to put it on from last year. Okay. So in the first year when the inventory is left, it's gonna be unrealized. 
The second year, when it's sold, it's going to be realized. Okay. The next thing. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry about that. Now, during year five, sub made sales to parents amounting to 3000 So know about that right away. That is basic. At a gross profit rate of 30%. So that's the subs, because they're the seller. So, at the end of year two, shouldn't say year two, I'm sorry, it should say year five. At the end of year five, parents' inventory contained items purchased from sub, so that's upstream, for 500. So, is that inventory that's left in the circle, is that beginning or ending? So this is ending inventory. Year five. So is it going to be realized or unrealized? It went from the sub to the parent. So the parent, the sub sold this to the parent. They put on their little um, gross profit, but it's still sitting in the circle at the end of the year. So we have to take the sub's profit off. So it's unrealized. Now, the parent uh, made no sales to the sub. No sales to the sub. Sub's inventory contained no items purchased from the parent. Intercompany loan was fully paid, no interest, and goodwill. That's going to be on changes of AD. Okay, so all the realized, unrealized have to go on the unrealized, realized schedule or schedule of intercompany profits. And the basic just go by themselves. Okay. So let's go on to page eight. And on page eight, here's the financial statements for your. So that's what we'll do last, because we do all the work to do that. Then we'll look at the changes in AD schedule. We're going to do that next. Okay, so what I've done is put um, year four in there because it's already done. And these should be negative. I'm sorry, I should have caught that, you guys. And then these are positive. So what do we need to do to equipment in year five? Well, we still need the $600, and it's going to be negative. So the equipment, we needed to increase it originally, because it was undervalued. So that means the sub on their books, the equipment was too small originally. So that means their depreciation is going to be too small, so we have to Increase depreciation expense. And here it's impairment. So that works out to 630. Which leaves us with 1800, 2420, which is 4220. And that's our changes in AD. Now, the one thing I do want to stress is which way is net income going? If we're increasing depreciation expense, it's going down. More expense, smaller net income. Goodwill impairment makes net income go down. And again, so for the total, it'll all go down. We assume no tax effect on these. So that's our changes in AD schedule. 
So now we need our list of basic transactions in year five, which again is optional, um, but it can help. So again, looking at this, we go anywhere there's basic. Let's start at the bottom. The intercompany loan and interest, that's done, so we don't need to worry. Parent made notes to sub, so there's no basic there. However, sub sales to parent of three, that's our basic transaction. The sub did not declare any dividends, so there's nothing there. So we've got a basic uh, sale of upstream or downstream. Sub to parent, so it's upstream. Okay, so upstream sale of 3000 Now, what are the accounts that we uh, use for this? We know sales has to go down, but what else? Cost of goods sold has to go down. Is there any tax here? Does it change net income? Doesn't change net income. So no tax effect. And I'm just going to make a note. So later, when you're looking back, it makes sense. There was no loan, no interest and no subs dividend in year five. But those are the kinds of things you're going to look for. Okay, on the next page, page nine, we've got the realized unrealized profit schedule or change in intercompany profits or intercompany profits, realized, unrealized, something like that. So keep page seven handy, because we're going to need that. 